Hey guys, it's Becky with Design Bundles and today I'm super excited to tell you about chemical wood burning with your cutting machine. Now we are going to show you this on the Silhouette Cameo, but remember that the basics are the same. You can still follow along regardless of what cutting machine that you have. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what I have here, um, I do have a little heat gun. I have my chemical burning marker. What do you call it? A chemical reaction marker. It's a wood burning marker. Um, these are just simple wood slice ornaments, which make really great test subjects, might I add, because they're very inexpensive. And then I have already cut and weeded a vinyl decal. Now the color does not matter. All right, because we're just going to use it as a stencil. And of course I have some transfer tape. Now I did get a piece of used transfer tape that I already had because um, I don't want this to adhere super well. Does that make sense? Like I want this to stick to the wood and hopefully I'm not gonna have a hard time getting the transfer tape to release. So let's see what we get. Now, if you have a, you definitely don't want to use a high tack transfer tape, in my opinion. Okay, and that's why I'm using the the already pre-used. And you want to pay attention to your hole. But you want to put this down, all right, and then burnish it down into place. But if you have more of a medium tack transfer tape, then um, then that works really good. And a lot of people ask, like, how do I know if it's medium tack or if it's high tack? Well, it's either really sticky or it's just kind of sticky. So um, you can always write in to wherever you purchase your vinyl from. And usually they can tell you if their transfer tape is considered a medium tack or a high tack. So this will be the third time I've used this piece. And sometimes you got to help it along. So I have my stencils down. This is where my marker is gonna come in. I wanna shake it really well. Now this marker in particular is one of the more common ones that you'll find. And you have two options. You have your tip, and then you also have a little brush. So it's up to you. I'm actually gonna use the little brush, but this is definitely, um, we'll use the brush on one, and then we'll use the tip on the other because this brush feels like it's definitely dispensing more marker fluid is that what we want to call it so I would actually maybe expect some bleeding so we'll see we'll see we'll see how it goes and it does not seem like a very durable tip so with I, I use my tips pretty vigorously so I would not expect this tip to last very long now that's relative if you don't need it for a long time if you just need to make a couple projects then that probably won't matter very much to you. We're just gonna let that sit and dry for a minute. I'm gonna use my tip. Now it is kind of like a paint pen where you have to prime it first. All right so we're just gonna hold it down and that should let the fluid flow into the marker tip. So I do not feel that I'm saturating the wood quite as much which I guess could be good or bad depending on how our results turn out. The last time I used this process, all we had was the marker tip. So I will be interested to see how it compares against the brush tip. But basically you want to fill in your entire stencil design and it doesn't take long. And I actually could see this, I'd have to read the uh, the safety label, but I could see this being good for my daughter. She's eight. I could see her enjoying this coloring process, at least for a couple ornaments until they get bored, right? So they are both filled in. Now, before we do the heat, we do take these off. Here, we'll start with this one since it's probably a little bit more dry. I don't think you have to wait for them to dry. Okay, so I am seeing what I feel like is quite a bit of bleed. It's not bad. We'll see how the results come out. Also, the when you use soft woods, this wood slice is a fairly soft wood from what I understand. I'm not a wood expert. 
um, but I think you get more bleeding with that. Okay, much crisper lines with the, the marker tip. So if I have to make a recommendation, it is going to be to use the marker tip instead of the brush tip. So we'll see uh, our final results, but I'm definitely seeing much crisper lines. Now you could even use acetate and cut reusable stencils. So maybe that'll be a project for another day. All right, now I do have a heat safe mat underneath me and butcher paper. I just, butcher paper is kind of one of my go-to things to protect my area, but because I'm applying heat, number one, I wanna make sure I keep my hand out of the way. All right, I can use my tweezers if I need something. So I'm gonna keep my hand out of the way and make sure I protect my work area, okay? Now this heat gun is nothing special. Um, but you can go to your hardware store and get a more high powered heat gun if you feel um, that these results aren't good, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, I did start to get some results from the heat gun, okay? But um, between the bleeding and then the heat, the heat gun results, I decided to try something different. So you guys get a twofer in this video. So what I'm going to do, I tore off a little piece of butcher paper here because I don't want to mess up my easy press, but I have my little baby easy press here. And we are just going to apply the heat straight to the ornament. Now, um, like I said, I'm using my easy press. I'm gonna leave this for about 60 seconds. Um, but you can also do this with your household iron, just like you would do with heat transfer vinyl or anything like that. So I'm definitely excited about that. So you don't even have to go out and buy a heat gun. You'll be able to do this with your heat press or your household iron. So like I said, 60 seconds and we will start the countdown. All right, let's see how we're doing. Ooh, look how pretty that is. All right, so. Let's hold that up higher. Oops, sorry, there we go. Very, very pretty. So I applied a lot of heat and I got a very dark wood burn. Um, but, now remember, this is the one that we already had the bleeding on. Um, I would say I'm gonna call applying the heat with a press a win uh, because actually I got the results much faster and um, I just think the results are overall better. So, I'm gonna tie these up with a bow and I'll show you what they look like finished. So, what did you think about our ornaments? Now I know, you know, this one, maybe it didn't turn out super great, but it was a great trial project. And like I said, these wood slices are so inexpensive that they're the perfect gift to uh, test it out on. And then of course, all right, this is our winner, winner chicken dinner. And I really love how it turned out. I added a cute little bow. And, um, you know, I can just see doing these uh, for my tree this year. Okay, so I meant to do them last year, but uh, these are definitely happening this year because it was just so easy. Now, hopefully you guys learned a few tips from our trial and error. But, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And, as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we have a lot of really fun ideas for you right around the corner. Thanks again for stopping in, and we will see you next time.